Hello, friends. It's a Friday. It's the last day of the week, presumably, depending on which country you're in. Anyways, we're going to talk about the hot news. But first, you might want to grab yourself a cup of coffee. And if you're like me, you'd be using Four Sigmatics Coffee because they are the sponsor for today's video. And I love this coffee so much. They have mushrooms in it. And I know that sounds a little weird, but you don't taste them. You don't see them. Just looks like ground coffee. Tastes like ground coffee. It actually is the premier coffee that I've been using in my household ever since I moved back to the US. The cognitive benefits of culinary mushrooms are well documented and Four Sigmatic has found a way to bring that to you in some hot beverages that you may enjoy. They not only have coffee, but they have different brews that you can go with. I personally have one of their hot cocoa drinks right before bed. This is what I wake up with and then I'm not drinking one now because it is late in the evening and I need to go to sleep tonight. So just Four Sigmatic, check them out at the link in the video description. Use coupon code UFDTECH to save 10% off your order with the them. It's my favorite coffee. It's the only coffee I buy. And maybe you could buy a little bit too. So let's do that. But get, get, get your cup of whatever you want to drink for this ready. I'll get my uh, LTT water bottle, ufdstore.com. And let's talk about GPU stuff because we have big information coming out of RDNA 2 versus Ampere. Yes, this is the next gen battle that we've been waiting for. What does AMD have next versus what NVIDIA has already announced? Yes, no. Maybe. I don't know. Can you repeat the question? We'll find out. The Radeon Instinct MI100, which is not exactly RDNA 2, it's actually cDNA, which is their compute version of what's going on, competing against NVIDIA's Ampere. This is actually on the Arcturus architecture instead of the big Navi architecture. So the MI100 has been benchmarked and AMD put out some slides about it, and one of the big things about it is that you can use it in multiple configurations. They're going to be using Infinity Fabric to connect all of the GPUs together so that you can have more scalable versions. You can see here that they're targeting machine learning training with scale out PCI Express based servers. You have two Epic CPUs and then eight MI100s connected, which is actually pretty great. But one of the big things that they're quoting is that you can see here up to 2.4 times better than the Ampere A100 from NVIDIA in FP32 performance, which FP32 performance is essentially just like really, really good performance for video gaming and all that kind of stuff. It's their single precision. They are touting the MI100 as being insanely fast at a 30% lower cost compared to the A100. There have been some benchmarks of the A100 that have been coming out, but one of the reasons for this is because it's supposed to have 120 compute units, which is equivalent to about, I think, it's 7,680 cores, and they're saying their FP32 performance is 42 teraflops. That is crazy. Just to compare it to the Series X console that we're expecting, that's 12 teraflops. This is over three times faster than that in a single card. And this is one of the big things that I have heard a lot of people say with regards to AMD and Big Navi. We've already seen what AMD can do with high-end GPUs. It's just always been in this context. It's been in the data center context and never in the actual gaming context for several reasons. They haven't been able to get it to scale properly at the lower end level. And then also driver issues with making sure that people feel comfortable using their cards and getting the optimal performance out of it. But the MI100 looks to be a B from AMD on their next-gen architecture. Hopefully, maybe at RDNA 2 will scale similarly to this and we might see a good competition between Big Navi and the RTX 3080 Ti of 3090, which we'll talk about in a second. But we've got some more details with regards to Big Navi because you'll remember in a hot news episode that we covered last week that there was a code name that popped up for a Mac computer, which was AMD's Navy Flounder. And then several months back, or I can't even remember how time works anymore, we talked about AMD's Sienna Cichlid, which appeared to be the Big Navi naming scheme that was popping up in Linux updates. Well, turns out with more Linux updates that have come out, Navy Flounder and Sienna Cichlid are both the same GPU, GFX 1030. This has been something that AMD hasn't done before if they are separate GPUs. You can see here the Navi 10, Navi 12, and Navi 14 all have different graphics naming schemes. So if Sienna Cichlid and Navy Flounder are the same GFX, that potentially means that they are both big Navi, which if the rumor holds true that Navy Flounder was for a Mac computer, Apple could potentially be getting a big Navi iteration sometime soon. We'll have to wait and see, see how that pans out. And we're gonna have to have to see, and we're gonna have to have to have to have to, we're gonna have to see how the RTX 3090 pans out because there's more 
rumors leaks coming out and, um, several leakers who are very prominent in the scene tweeted out some information about the rtx 3090 which presumably either is a scaled up version of the 3080 ti or it's the replacement for the 3080 ti we're not quite sure yet i'm gonna pretty much guarantee personally i have no source on this that the 3090 is not a dual gpu setup it doesn't have two chips on it anyways the 3090 according to cat corgi is that it may have up to 50 percent better performance than the rtx 2080 ti which speculatively would be the card that it's replacing hitting almost 10 thousand points in time spy extreme which just for reference the 2080 ti can hit about 6300 points so if it can overclock at all it's going to be over 50 percent better if these are close to the final clock speeds 50 percent better hopefully for the same price that's kind of where i'm at i really really do hope and believe that nvidia is not going to raise the price on us they already did that with the 20 series we're just going to get the same price for the 30 series and then they'll raise it again for the 40 series we'll see if that actually pans out but what's the point with graphics cards if you're not playing games and how can you buy games once you spent all your money on gpus i don't know well steam's trying to make it harder for you to be able to afford the games because you all y'all have been undermining their pricing strategies in various regions they're actually making it so that you can't just use a vpn and let's say go to the south african region for horizon zero dawn which currently costs 50 dollars on the steam store but when you went to the south african region it was the equivalent of i think it was 21 dollars Anyways, a lot of people apparently did that and they did not like that. So they are going to make it so that you need to have a card in the currency of the region that you're trying to purchase in, which makes sense for trying to protect this. I know that I personally went to the South African region to try to buy Horizon Zero Dawn and gift it to my normal account because I have a South African account and a US account, but they wouldn't let me do that. So I just gave up and bought it on the US account for the full price because the game's absolutely worth it. We're going to talk a little bit more about Horizon Zero Dawn in a second, but Steam making it so that you guys can't backdoor their their benevolence and there's some more good updates when it comes to steam with regards to geforce now which is nvidia's streaming service that allows you to play games that you already own on their cloud anyways they're going to have an automatically syncing setup for your steam library you're going to be able to go to within your steam library and sync your steam games so that you don't have to go and search for all the games because it was quite arduous with geforce now to find out which games you had and what which ones were supported anyways you can sync your library with geforce now great update but what's not a great update is our china apparently been going through a little bit of a uh, discontent when it comes to the upper management in that part of the company apparently the uk based part of arm fired the ceo of arm china but he refused to leave back in june when he was fired and he's just continuously been running the company regardless in china regardless of what the uk told him and then apparently he's even hired private security so that nobody can take him out of the building when he's there we'll have to see how the coup goes oh wow okay maybe he just really doesn't want to be sold to nvidia and he's just protesting that i don't know i don't have a good explanation for it i'm not part of it but wow and wow is what i have to say about gigabyte's new z490 Aorus master water force motherboard wow wow Wow. This thing actually is quite neat. You can see it's on a 360 millimeter radiator with RGB fans. One of the cool things about the block is that it doesn't just cover the CPU. It actually also covers the VRM direct touch heat pipes to a whole bunch of different areas. It's not just like a Asetek CPU block, but it's actually a whole mono block situation that connects, which I think looks phenomenal. Maybe people won't be getting because it's Intel, but dang, I think that that's a pretty stunning implementation if I do say so myself. Oris, good job. I like it. We'll just have to see if it actually works out properly. And let's see if this works out properly. Google leaking their own phone on their own website on Google Store. Um, we have, we've talked about the Pixel 4a several times here on Hot News, and it turns out that Google got tired of that and just leaked it themselves with the Google phone. But then it has like these things that you can click on and it changes the color. And then once you get all the colors there, it makes it look like it's cursing at you, which I don't like the Google phone and then it's kind of a png removal and then it has the stock standard lorem ipsum uh, text so i don't know what google's doing what sort of marketing this is but pixel 4a coming soon hopefully and hopefully uh the epic games continues to roll out more features because they have been lagging behind to quite some extent epic games store now adding in-game achievements 
for Ark Survival Evolved. That's it. They're going to be rolling out more, supposedly, but uh, it's just one game, one game for achievements right now. But one game that you can achieve probably not a whole lot on because it's going to take you forever to play this game. Anyways, you could, I mean, you could achieve a lot. I'm not trying to say that there's nothing of value in the game. I'm just trying to say that there's uh, it's it's a, it's a lot of content. Microsoft Flight Simulator is coming to Steam. That's my and it's going to get VR support later. Now let's talk about Horizon Zero Dawn, which is going to be launching in exactly a week on the PC, August 7th. We've got the specifications coming out from Guerrilla Games, what you need to get 60 FPS on this. The minimum 1080p 30 FPS requires an i5 2500K with a GTX 780 or an R9 290 for just regular 1080p 60 FPS at original settings, which is likely just the way it looked on the PS4. You can use a GTX 1066 gig or an RX 580. 8 gig, but then they're going to have higher quality settings than just original, which is the PS4 version. They're going to have up to ultimate quality, which is what I'm going to be running it on on my 2080 Ti because I want to play this game again and I want it to look phenomenal, which it absolutely will. So, yes, I'm excited for this one and I hope you are excited to go into your weekend and maybe uh, pick up a cup of mushroom brew. Delicious. I love it. Four Sigmatic is the only coffee I drink. Four Sigmatic, I love it. You should too. UFD Tech, save 10%. Link in the video description. Do that. And why don't you describe your loneliness from me when I don't make news videos on the weekend?